who's afraid of the big bad wolf, the scary monster of which I speak? Socialism. And you may have noticed the tide of fear is rising. One example of this can be found in a new film premiering today. It's called I Want Your Money. Take a look. The problem with socialism is that sooner or later, you run out of other people's money. From the time they get up in the morning and flush the toilet, the American people are taxed. Then they go and get their cup of coffee and they're taxed. This goes on all day long. Tax, tax, tax. So at a time when the economy is so rough, why this endless debate over capitalism versus socialism and which financial system is superior? Joining me now to help answer this question, Michael Preisner, member of the Party for Socialism and Liberation, and Wayne Allen Root, vice presidential nominee for the Libertarian Party in 2008 and also a very outspoken anti-socialist. Hey there, fellas. I want to thank you so much for joining me. Um, the first thing I want to do is just make sure we're talking about the same thing. Socialism can conjure, uh, conjure up images from happy commun communes overflowing with wealth and six weeks vacation. And on the other side, dark streets filled with marching troops and no personal liberty. So in one sentence or less, what is socialism? Michael, I want to start with you. Sure. Socialism means that the vast wealth uh, produced by this country, produced by this society, by so many tens of millions of hardworking families, uh, that that wealth be actually put in the hands of those people that create it and used to meet human needs here at home to fund housing, to fund jobs, to fund health care, to right, fund education, one to fund all the things that people need and deserve. All right. Uh, Wayne, what about you? Well, it's a way to destroy any economy in the world. That's sentence one, but I'll just give me one more sentence. And the other way to put it is redistribution of wealth. What he's talking about is theft. I earn the money, you steal it from me to give it to people who did not earn it. That's theft. That's how you destroy an economy. All right. Over the last few years, I mean, you may have noticed this debate has really been picking up steam on cable news, on the mainstream media, at Tea Party rallies, and often socialism is portrayed as a blood sucking vampire. Michael, <laughs> who stands to benefit from making socialism out to be evil? Uh, well, the big capitalists uh, benefit from making socialism out to be evil because they are really the only ones that stand to lose anything uh, from changing the political situation, from changing the economic system. Um, and you know, the other person I'm talking to you on, on this interview uh, is correct. There is massive theft going on. There is massive amount of theft going on in this country. But it's the big capitalists that are stealing from all of these working families in this country. We make this country the richest country in the world. There is so much wealth here, and it's all being sucked up by a tiny group of billionaires and their multimillionaire puppets in Washington. There is a vast amount of theft going on and it's coming for out of our pockets and going into the pockets of the richest people on the planet. We're talking about trillions upon trillions of dollars, over $11 trillion that was stolen from us, that was a product of our labor, that was our tax money, that was handed to the richest people on the planet because they couldn't pay their debts. Um, and what do they do with that money? They use it to pad their own assets, to give their executive uh, higher and higher bonuses, um, and they actually created no jobs, and job losses continue. So there is theft going on. I think more and more people are recognizing that every single day. And just this past, uh, this summer, it was record-breaking foreclosures in this country, where almost a quarter million families had their houses stolen from them by the banks because they, could, they were struggling to get by, they couldn't afford their payments anymore. In all 50 states, investigations all are right, showing Michael. that there's been widespread fraud, uh, widespread corruption on behalf of Michael, the biggest I banks, give Bank Wayne of America, J.P. Um, Morgan Chase. So all of those families are struggling because of the theft that is built into the capitalist system. I want to give Wayne a chance to respond to that, please. Well, obviously, uh, we don't agree on socialism versus capitalism. Socialism has never worked, Christine, anywhere in the world it's ever been tried. Right now in Cuba, uh, communists like Raul Castro have decided to fire most of their government employees. 500,000 government employees have been fired instantly and told to find a job in the private sector. Good luck and God bless. We can't afford you anymore. Government can't take care of everyone. And they're promising to fire another 500,000 in March. So you're talking about a million government employees in a country, Cuba, that only has five million total employees. In America, we'd have to fire every government employee in the country to equal those kind of numbers. Not everybody can work for government. Not everybody can be supported by government. Not everybody can have their hands out if you want your country to survive. But here's the last thing I'll say, so I'll keep it brief. There's one thing I do agree with your guest about. He's wrong if he thinks I'm against uh, or I'm for bailouts stimulus, handouts to banks, handouts to big corporations, corporate welfare. That's not capitalism. 
That's crony capitalism, and it's mostly practiced by liberal Democrat socialists like Barack Obama. So I'm not for bailouts. I'm not for handouts. Let the banks either succeed or fail, but don't give them taxpayer money. And you bring up the president. So real quickly, I want to play uh, another clip from that movie that comes out today, I Want Your Money. What you doing here? I'm redistributing the wealth. I learned in school spreading the wealth is good for everyone. Well, I learned from real life that it's not. In fact, there's a word for it. It's called theft. And I know, Wayne, you've already uh, talked about this. And I know you've written about uh, what's happening in America regarding President Obama. Uh, you say that it's his plan, and um, he's following the advice, just like we just saw in, in the clip, that he's following the advice of professors at Columbia University. I know uh, you're talking about Richard Cloward and Francis Fox Piven. Make your case for why you think this is all part of a bigger plan by President Obama that he knows exactly what has, he's doing. Christine, I'm impressed. You did your homework. Very good. You get an A in my, uh, in my exam. Uh, I, I graduated Columbia University class of 83 with Barack Obama, my classmate. We were both pre-law, political science majors. Uh, I plan to be a presidential candidate in 2012 running against Barack Obama as a libertarian third-party candidate. Uh, I called it before we ever had the 2008 election. I said pretty much every classmate I ever had at Columbia University was either a communist, a socialist, or a Marxist. They hated America. They hated capitalism. They hated anyone who made money, any CEO who runs a company they were antagonistic towards. And, uh, and you see what you get with Barack Obama. I did, in fact, write a piece called Barack Obama purposely overwhelming the capitalist system to try and destroy our economy, hurt small business, which contributes all the money to conservative candidates, so to, to hurt his opposition and make sure there's no money for opposition candidates, and to socialize America. And I think I called it right on the money. Every day, not a day goes by where you don't see whether it's Obamacare, cap and trade, car check to unionize the whole country, making Puerto Rico the 51st state, legalizing 12 million illegal immigrants who are all going to vote Democrat for a socialist nation filled with handouts to make government bigger. Everything Obama wants is to simply make this a socialist nation and kill people like me. I'm not a big businessman. I'm a small businessman. I've never had a company with more than 100 employees. Everything I do is small business, and Obama wants to kill the people that fund Republican, conservative, and libertarian causes. Michael, what do you think about this? Um, well, I think I'd be doing a disservice to our viewers if I didn't uh, call you out for being a complete racist for your uh, demonization of all the undocumented families who are forced to come to this country uh, to work because of the economic policies imposed on their countries. Um, I also think uh, it's important to say that, you know, you're really what you're trying to do, all these Tea Party attack dogs, all these libertarians, uh, all this anti-socialist propaganda, all this anti-communist hysteria that you're trying to whip up, it has one goal, and that goal is maintaining the status quo where a small handful of people hoard the wealth of society while tens of millions of working families are increasingly pushed into poverty every single day. You know, you're really trying to blur the lines between who the enemy is and who you really need to be uniting with. Uh, you're trying to demonize immigrants. You're trying to use all kinds of uh, racist propaganda to demonize the president. But there's really two sides in this economic crisis. And I think the capitalist system has proved to people all over the world, especially here in the United States, that it's a system that does not work. But you're trying to blur the lines that there's two sides. You're on the side of the workers who are laid off from their jobs because uh, the capitalists, the co-owners of that company, Company. Um, all they want to do is increase their own profits, increase their own bonuses. Uh, either you're on the side of those workers who are laid off, or on your, they're either on the side of the CEO who wants to lay them off so they can pad their assets. You're either on the side of the families who are being kicked out of their houses uh, through no fault of their own, or you're on the side of the banks who you feel should have the right to take their homes away. Either you're on the side of the tens of millions of families who can't even go to the doctor if they're sick, who can't take their children to the doctor if they're sick, or you're on the side of the insurance companies who profit off of their suffering. There's two sides. There's a line drawn in this country, either on your, you're on the side of the vast majority of humanity, the vast majority of the population that creates all of this wealth on society, or you're on the side of the bosses, the bankers, the big capitalists who will do everything all they right, can in their power to steal more and more from us every single let day. Let me jump in here. I was going to move on, but I got to ask you, Wayne, are you a racist? Yeah, I, I think that's kind of funny. You know, what's great about Obama is that he's brought all this out of the closet. Everybody now laughs when people call a conservative a racist. Tell your guests that his news is old news. You know what the definition of a racist is? Anyone who's winning an argument with a liberal or a socialist, they immediately pull the race card out 
and call everybody a racist. That's a joke. We all laugh at it. You can't even bother us anymore with it. The fact is, the biggest racists in the world are in the Obama administration. Someone like Justice Sotomayor, the Supreme Court Justice, who actually believes and says publicly, if you're a Spanish, Hispanic woman, you, you are smarter than a white male and you deserve to be on the Supreme Court. That's racism. If you want to give houses to people because they're black or because they're Hispanic or because they're poor, which is the policy of basically liberal administration after liberal administration, that's what caused the bankruptcy of America and destroyed the whole real estate industry. That's racism. If the Obama administration just passed financial reform and they want to give small business loans specifically to black small business owners, that's racism. I believe everyone's equal and no one should ever get a loan for a house, for a car, should never get into a college because of the color of their skin, not because they're white, not because they're black. They should get in because they are talented. The gray matter in your brain, Christine, is all that matters. I'm the one who's not racist. On the other side, I'm facing nothing but racist. They should look in the mirror. Michael, I want to talk to you about um, kind of your method here. Are, do you have a lot of followers who kind of are on board with this movement um, to try to change the system? I mean, what, what's the strategy here to get people on board to follow this idea of socialism? What's your argument? Well, every single day it's becoming more and more apparent to people all over the country that this system simply does not work. All we do is watch uh, all of our wealth, all of the, the wealth that we produce in this society squandered on things that do absolutely nothing to benefit us. There's, just in California here in this state, there's a new budget passed um, where one family firm got a $30 million tax cut at the same time there was cuts uh, to people uh, receiving HIV and AIDS care, uh, funding for uh, child welfare. Um, you want to talk about racism in politics, that's racist to attack the most vulnerable sectors of society, the people who are suffering the most, taking from them and giving it to the richest people in the state. That's the status quo in this country. And what's happening all over this country is people are seeing, people are seeing that line between those who are hoarding all the wealth, the billionaires who are hoarding all the wealth, and all of us who produce all the wealth, yet we're laid off from our jobs, we're kicked out of our houses, we go bankrupt because of hospital bills, and more and more people are waking up to this. You know, Warren Buffett, the multi-billionaire, said it himself. He said, there is a class war in this country, it's the rich class who's making war, and it's my class who who's winning. Well, that's not an equation that could sustain itself forever because our class is being pushed more and more into poverty every single day, having more and more taken from us every single day. And what I'm seeing as an organizer with the Party for Socialism and Liberation is more and more people from young students who are cut off from education to veterans who are sent to fight in these criminal wars for profit uh, to people who are being kicked out of their homes and laid off from their jobs, more and more people recognizing that it's not an individual president, as our other guests would like you to think, who is just really the CEO of the capitalist class, who's just representing those big business interest. It's not an individual president who's the enemy. It's a system that's an enemy. It's a system right. that cares only about making more and more profits for a small group of people at the expense of the vast majority. And those people are ready to fight back. All right. And real briefly, I want to get both of your reaction to a headline from yesterday's Wall Street Journal. That headline, Capitalism Saved the Miners. Now, the gist of this is that a small company in Berlin, Pennsylvania, had the technology, a drill bit. The author argues that if this company, Rock Incorporated, was not in it for the money, they wouldn't have developed the technology, and most likely, and this is straight from the article, the miners would be dead. So, your reaction um, to, this, to this headline, Capitalism Saved the Miners. Uh, Michael, I'll, I'll go to you first. Sure. You know what? It's, it's really kind of ridiculous to say that only uh, capitalism and only this need for profit is what drives technology. You know where most of the great minds in the United States are? Where all the physicists, the chemists, they're all working for major pharmaceutical companies, and the majority of them are making bombs to destroy uh, innocent people all over the world to maintain uh, global hegemony for the U.S. capitalist class. That's where all the great minds, imagine if all of those great minds uh, were, using, were being put to use uh, to try to better society, to try to better things for this. It is not profit that's the motive for people who want to create. And I think in a country where we can provide every single person a college education through the highest level that they want, I think we'd have an entire new generation of scientists and doctors and chemists that would really revolutionize society. And that's what we've seen. You know, our, our other guest said that socialism has failed everywhere it's worked. Look at a, a country like Russia, who had a socialist revolution, went from a completely backwards country with 90% illiteracy to being one of the world leaders with amazing technology and amazing economic growth in such a short period of time. That's what happens when you take uh, the vast uh, potential of society and the vast wealth of society right. and use it in the common interest of all people, not a tiny group of people who hoard all that wealth. All right, we are almost out of time. And Wayne, I do want to give you the last word. 
Well, the last word is that America has been the greatest nation in the world for 200 years. We defeated the Soviet system. Uh, China today is becoming a capitalist nation. Soviet Union is becoming a capitalist nation. I dare say Cuba is trying to become a capitalist nation. Not everybody can work for government. People get up in the morning with a profit motive and they want to change the world, but they also want to make money changing the world. Not only will those miners save Christine, but every day in this country without universal health care, people's lives are saved who have cancer and brain disease and diabetes because there's someone out there inventing something fantastic for society and getting rich while they're doing it. God bless America. Let's keep it going. And uh, let me tell you something. Do you remember the Soviet Union? What kind of things they had on their shelves in their supermarkets when it was a communist country? Nothing. Their shelves were bare. In America, they can't even believe when they come here that our shelves are filled with what it's filled with. Why? Because all the people and all the companies that make that have a profit motive. Capitalism works. It always will. God bless America and let more people like your guests keep talking because they will scare the heck out of most Americans away from socialism. All right, certainly an interesting discussion, a boxing match, if you will. Michael Preisner, member of the Party for Socialism and Liberation, and Wayne Allen Root, vice presidential nominee for the Libertarian Party, and as he um, announced on this show, a future presidential candidate in 2020.